Hey guys, in this video I'm going to give you a little bit of an update on my investigation on the flips of death that I've started with the Grasshopper 94 and the Leader 120. And I did a video before about brownouts and there was a little bit of coverage on flips of death um, in that video, but this is a totally new ground here and this is not going to cover voltage drops uh, related to brownouts for receivers. Now brownouts can also be used for voltage drops on ESCs for example or flight controllers but this video is going to cover specifically the flip of death and what I think is going on. The well I think it's the situation is pretty complicated and let me give you a little bit of background as to where my investigation uh, went and what I discovered and I think you guys will find this interesting and it, it, it does lend to the fact that this is a very complicated problem. I know that a lot of people have different setups and some people have flips to death and some people don't and it's a bit of a mystery as to why that is but I think I've nailed it down a few things here that we can look at that will help alleviate some of these problems. Anyway so a little bit of background here I first, when I first reviewed the Grasshopper 94, I had to take the digital idle speed all the way up to 11% to avoid the flips of death. So basically, uh, it didn't matter what battery, battery I used, it would just uh, go into a flip of death as soon as I went into acro flight and did FPV and I did my typical roll maneuver, it would immediately go into the uh, flip of death and crash. And then once I raised the idle speed up to 11%, then that stopped. But raising the idle speed to 11% isn't really a good solution because it's uh, it's almost to the point where I want, when I when I arm this quad, it wants to take off because it's, the the motors are spinning pretty fast. So I didn't think that was a very good solution, which is which is the reason why I started this investigation. Now, when I got the around to reviewing the Leader 120 here also got the flips to death on this one and I was able to avoid that by raising the idle speed to I, I believe it was about 8 or 8.5%. Eight Wasn't as bad as 11% obviously but still not ideal considering that the default is 4.5% and oftentimes you can go even lower. And what I found out was that both of these models here uh, from Full Speed RC have the same ESCs, same 4 in 1 uh, 10 amp ESCs. With, they have, they're, they're running BL Heli S. And I know that they're the same ESCs because if you go into BL Heli Configurator or BL Heli Suite, you can see the, the naming convention for all the ESCs. Basically, uh, they use a naming convention that determines the, the sort of some uh, characteristics of the ESC. And in this case, uh, they, the naming convention is like a letter, a letter, and then uh, two numbers. And um, I'll flash a little thing here that explains what it is. I can't explain it. I know that the second letter uh, has to do with the speed of the um, so the processor on the uh, DSC. So in VLHL, it could be either 24 megahertz or 48 megahertz. So all I know is that the layout or the naming convention on the ESCs for these two models from Full Speed RC was FH40. So I know that they have the same ECs and they have the same, they have the same problem where they have the flips to death. And the thing is, was I wasn't getting them before I got these models from Full Speed RC. So I was like, wow, it's very suspicious. Well, I thought maybe uh, Full Speed RC was using an ESC that was perhaps a lower quality or perhaps defective. I wasn't really sure, but it was very suspicious that both of these models from Full Speed RC had the same ESCs and had the same problem. So I started looking into this a little bit more, and I found out that uh, this also this model here, the Eaglet 85, has the same ESC. I was like, hmm, this model didn't give me any flips of death at all. Okay, what's going on here? Then I start. Then I, then I, start, I really started looking into some of my other models. Uh, I looked into the awesome Q8, Q95 here. Also has the same 10 amp 4 in AC with the same naming convention FH40. And this one here, the SPC Maker 
95 GF also has the same ESC, 401 ESC. Now, it might not be the exact same ESC, but it has to do with the way the components are laid out on the board and it's got the same processor and everything. So basically, they're the same ESC as, as far as I'm concerned because they're using the same uh, firmware, the same hex file. So when you flash the ESC, uh, all of these ESCs will take the exact same firmware, so they must be fairly uh, identical, at least in my mind. So then, when I was looking at all the ESCs here, I looked at the firmware version that was running on all this, and all of them were running version 16.5. So I was like, okay, well that's interesting. Why are they all running 16.5 and not 16.6? Um, but what's more interesting is that these here are also running 16 and 5, no flips of death whatsoever. And I was thinking, well, okay, it can't, maybe it's not necessarily the ESC. It might be the version of BL Heli that's running on them, perhaps. And so I decided, okay, well, I'll try and flash the uh, 401 ESC here on the Grasshopper from 16.5 to 16.6. And then wouldn't you know it, after I did that, I was able to lower the idle speed from 11% to, uh, it was 8.5%. And I was like, wow, okay, I can I can now go as low as 8.5% and not experience any flips to death, which I thought, wow, just, just from upgrading the firmware, changing nothing else. By the way, I changed the props on these, and I'll explain that a little bit later. I still was using the original five-bladed, those green props that was on the original review at that point. So, okay, well, perhaps the older version of the firmware had something to do with the flips of death, but why only on these two and not these three up here? Big mystery. I don't know what's going on. That's very, very strange. Anyway, so then I was like, okay, well, let's experiment a little bit more. And then at this, that point, I decided I'll, to change the props out on this guy. And so I went from the five-bladed props to these King Kong three-bladed props. And these do weigh a little bit less, and they don't have as much power. Um, and after I did the testing, I have, so basically I was still in the same uh, beta flight version that it came, I think it was 3.1.5 or 3.1.6. I only upgraded the firmware on the ESCs to 16.6, but then at this point I changed the props from the five-bladed props to the three-bladed props. And I was able to get the idle speed down even just a little bit further, and I was down, oh, just another 1%. I got down to 7.5%, and without any flips of death. I was like, okay, wow, so I'm making progress. So I, I changed the firmware on the ESC, and I changed the props, and I, I got the idle speed down even a little bit more. So I was like, wow, this is really, really interesting. What's going on here? I, and honestly, I'm clueless, but what it tells you that these flips of death, I think, are caused by multiple um, sources. It could be props, it could be the ESCs, it could be the motors. I'm very suspicious of these motors. I, th I think the only difference between these motors are, are this is 7800 kV and the one on liter 120 is 7500 kV, but then, you know, the Eagle here is using the same motors as well, 7500 kV, but on a two-inch prop. And this had never flipped to death on no, no flips of death in this one at all. And I'm still running older versions of BLLE 16F5 on these guys with the gem fans. No flips of death. And, you know, this one's a JST connection. Uh, this one has an XT30 connector. Okay, so a lot of different things going on. But every time I make a little change to the grasshopper here, I'm able to lower my idle speed. So I was like, okay, this is really, really interesting. I'm now down to 7.5% on this setup. What happens, what happens if I take um, beta flight from 3.1.6 or whatever was on here originally and go to 3.2? So that was like sort of the next logical step. So I flashed beta flight 3.2. I think it was release candidate 3, I believe. And I was able to then get the idle speed down yet again from 7.5% and I got down to 5.5%. And I flew it pretty hard, uh, 
all the way down to the end of the battery and it was still letting me do flips without uh, doing the flip of death. So, guys, I think that, that this problem is very, very, very complicated because each time I do little changes, things improve. Updating ESC firmware, updating flight controller firmware, changing props, all those things are, I think are factors into these flips of death. Now what was interesting is that when, uh, well the first time I experienced the flip to death, I thought it was just the connector. And so I switched, you know, basically I was using a JST connector and I had the, I had some pretty beefy motors, I think they were like 1106 motors, drawing way too many amps. Um, and I was running a JST and I would get the flips to death. So this is what I was talking about in that first video about the brownouts. I switched the connector from JST to XT30 and then no more flips to death. I didn't change anything else. From no firmware updates, no nothing like that. So I thought, okay, well, it, it's primarily due to the connector. Now you see here, I'm still using the JST on the Grasshopper, even though I made all of these basically software changes and changed the props, and I've, and I've eliminated the flips to death down to five and a half percent idle speed. So I think I'm making progress here. I think I got lucky. Earlier, when I when I changed the connector from JST to XT30, had I perhaps changed my idle speed at that point, maybe I I wouldn't have needed to change the connector. I don't know. I guess I'll never know because it's too late now. But it's interesting that changing the connector eliminated the flips of death at that time, but changing the idle speed or software will eliminate the flips of death if you don't change the connector. So I'm thinking. If I change the connector now from JST to XT30, I could probably take my idle speed all the way back down to 4.5%. So that's probably the next logical step for me here, or at least for the progression for this particular model. I haven't done any, any further testing on the Leader 120. I've just been doing all the testing on this guy. So I probably should confirm a lot of these findings on the Leader 120. It's just that the Leader 120 was at like eight and a half, eight or eight and a half percent on the idle speed, so it didn't really bother me that much. But eleven percent really bothered me a lot, so I didn't really like that. But I'm thinking if I change the connector on this, on the Leader 120 to XT30, maybe I can lower the idle speed down even a little bit more. On top of you know changing the ESC firmware and the flight controller firmware, maybe even changing the props. I'm thinking my theory is that the heavier props will cause uh, flips to death. Um, I guess the I guess the occurrence will occur more frequently with a heavier prop versus a lighter prop, or if you have a weaker motor, for for example. I think these motors are perhaps maybe a little bit weak, and when the flight controller is requesting power for them, if the prop is too heavy for the motor to overcome the inertia of the prop, then uh, the flight controller flips out and you get the flip of death. This is just my theory, I think. I think at this point. Obviously, the flip of death is caused by the flight controller in the end because there's some sort of feedback loop occurring where it's just like it can't get out of the roll, it just keeps on going. And it's because you probably, and I, honestly, you don't, you're not going to really know unless you do like some sort of black box logging or something like that, but a lot of these micros don't have uh, black box capability, so you can't really know. But if you could maybe film. The flip of death in super slow mo, for example, you probably find that one of the motors has stopped spinning, and then the other ones are just like continuing to spin, and that's why uh, you get the flip of death and the crash. So, bottom line here is, I think that there's a lot of different things you guys can try. Um, I would say update your uh, ESC firmware to the latest version 16.6. Um, doesn't hurt to go to the latest firmware on the flight controller. You might as well just go to Betaflight 3.2. And then uh, take a look at your motors. Take a look at your props. You know, uh, maybe go to a lighter prop if you're, if you're running a really heavy prop. Look at into changing your connector from JST to XT30. I think these are there's multiple things you can do to get rid of these flips of death. Uh, I don't think it's just one thing. It, it, I think just the one time that I had the flip of death early on, Changing the connector for me fixed it, so I, I think I just got lucky and I thought, oh, okay, that's, that'll fix it for everything. But then once I ran into this problem here, I realized that the problem on flips to death was extraordinarily complicated. So the bottom line is, 
I don't think there's just one solution to fixing this problem. I think you've got to look at uh, multiple different areas and figure out, you know, maybe test one or another and see which ones will work for you. And obviously you want to go do the software stuff first because that's simpler um, if, if you don't have the ability to change props, for example. And then I think that the last resort after changing everything here, you know, the connector or whatever is then looking at the motor and maybe putting some higher quality motors on. I think that would be like your absolute last resort. Um, of course, then you could change the motors and the ESCs as well. But I really don't think that the ESC is the main source because I'm running the older 16 at 5 on these and those don't have flips to death at all. In fact, this one here is running 317 with a digital idle speed of 3% on those on that ESC on these gem fan props and it runs perfectly fine. So, And this is a pretty heavy setup. So uh, I think that whatever's going on here is causing this. I think it has to do with these motors. These motors here are like uh, Sunny Sky motors or higher quality motors. These are cheaper motors. I think that I think that the cheaper motors are probably more prone to uh, flips to death. I think the motors are very suspicious of the motors and the props aren't here. And of course, you know, the software has a lot to do with it too. Anyway, just wanted to share with you guys where, I, where I'm at with my investigation. I'm still doing a little bit more, but I'm pretty confident that if I change this connector, which I was planning to do anyway, but I'm, now I'm going to change this, I think I'm going to be able to uh, change, get my idle speed all the way down to four and a half percent. I'm actually pretty happy at with it at five and a half percent actually. It's I probably you know if I wouldn't have wouldn't have if I weren't experimenting I would uh just leave the GSD connector on there and just use a lighter battery but I want to see what happens when I put an XD30 on there. So we'll see. Anyway guys let me know if you have any questions and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.